Okay, I will very quickly run through the sequence in which we complete this table. First thing I want to point out is the distance between the lowest and equilibrium position is of course the same as the distance between the equilibrium and the highest position. So when the when the when the spring mass system go from here to here and when it goes from here to here it travels the same distance. All right. So let's first complete the GP column. In part B1, we have already figured out that whenever we lose a height of uh, going from here to here, the GP changes by 0 0.785. So we have made the lowest points the reference point, so 0 GP here. So when we make this distance, we know that the GP must increase by this much. This is the number that we calculated uh, in part B1. It actually corresponds to the change in going from here to here which should be the same as the change that goes from here to here all right so when we go from here to here the gp should increase by yet another 0 0.785 so we are going to take this number add another 0 0.785 and we get this number 1.57 all right okay next the epe column uh, for this particular question, when the spring mass system is at the highest position, the spring is actually unstretched. It is at its natural length. So the EP when the spring is unstretched is zero. In part B1, we have already calculated that the EPE is 0 0.37, eh, 392 joules. Okay, to fill this box here, you've got to realize that when we go from here to here, we are doubling the extension of the spring. So if you double the extension, the EPE should be multiplied by 4 times. This because EPE is half kx square, extension square. So if the extension is doubled, the EPE must be quadrupled. So you take this number, multiply it by 4 times, you get 1.57. Next, the KE column. This is an oscillation, so obviously at the extreme positions, the KE should be 0 because the, the mass is at rest. Oh, I don't think we can fill in this box yet. But we can fill in this column now. The total energy of the spring mass system is basically the summation of GPE, EPE, and KE. So you just add up these three numbers, you will get the total energy. These three numbers, total energy. Of course, the total energy of the spring mass system should be constant. Right? It's just oscillating, 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 and there's no uh, if there's no damping, then the total energy remains as this. Now that we know the total energy is 1.57, we can fill this box now because these three numbers must add up to 1.57. So using this fact, these three numbers must add up to this, I can fill in this number. And so I've completed the table. Ta-da!